Good morning to everybody. Uh, if I were to ask you to start clapping for a couple of seconds, would you do that for me, please? Okay, all right, thank you. Um, I'll tell you why we did what we did, uh, but we can park this right now. Okay. Um, I started my journey way back in um, 1998. And this was uh, Professor Sugata Mitra, who was then the chief scientist of NIIT. Uh, he, is, uh, he was the driving force behind Hole in the Wall and School in the Cloud. You know, uh, rich people were coming up to him and saying, my child is a genius. He's doing fantastic work at the computers. So Professor said, fantastic. But you can't have these spurt of geniuses. So uh, he thought, is it, is it children who are wired, who are intuitively wired to pick up computers? Or is it, is it of course, because of the environment they're coming from? So just to prove this hypothesis, he made a hole in the wall, he placed a computer outside, connected with the internet, and watched the children. It was uh, three feet above ground, and these were underprivileged slum children who had never seen a computer before and who did not understand English. Children, in a couple of hours, were browsing the internet, going to Disney.com sites, working on paint, word, just about everything. This was too good to be true. So he replicated it at multiple places, and we found similar findings. All right. So, um, well, we thought there has to be a point in time when children stop to learn by themselves. They need somebody else, they need teachers. So we designed a ridiculous experiment. And this was an experiment uh, where uh, it was in Tamil Nadu, deep into Tamil Nadu, called a place called Kalikuppa. Uh, this is, was a tsunami hit village, a fisherman village, and we placed two computers, put offline biotechnology content. And these are primary school going children or dropouts. So their age is 8 to 13 or 14 years. And we said, can Tamil speaking children pick up high end biotechnology on their own in English? So we tested them, they got a zero. Fantastic. We came back after two and a half months. We asked the children, we said, could you understand anything? And they said, no. Obviously, what did we expect? So we said, all right, uh, so how often were you coming? And they said, every day. So one girl said, apart from the fact that improper duplication of the DNA leads to genetic disorder, I could not understand anything. She said that in broken English in Tamil. And not just that, but she was explaining. She said, this is how neurons communicate. And there was one boy who was explaining hereditary, and he said, he said, you know, the color of my grandfather's eye and my father's eye and my eye is the same, it is because of genes. So we tested them, and they got 30%. Fail, according to formal schooling. So we said, all right, we had this volunteer, and we said, you know what, you stand behind the children, and you just praise them. And you said, oh my God, fantastic. How could you do this? I mean, how did you do this? I couldn't even do it. Behave like a granny. So she did just that. We came back after two and a half months. We tested the children, and guess how much they'd got? They'd got 57%. We did not stop at that. We came back to Delhi, tested in an affluent private school, 11th graders. And they got 60%. A deep, deep thought for us and a great learning for us. But right now, I will just park this uh, thought and I will move on to... Um, all right. This is my view. I think schooling system really is outdated and is in a, over a decade of time, it just might become obsolete. And why do I say that? There is a reason behind it. Uh, please understand, I am talking about uh, government school children, primary school going children who fall in the bottom of the pyramid, uh, maybe catering to 67% of the population. I am not talking about private schools or Kendra Vidyalas where come uh, fall in the top of the pyramid, maybe uh, in between. Though, of course, what I'm saying also is applicable to them. I question about teachers. Do we have enough teachers? 
are teachers skilled? Because the moment you skill the teachers, they automatically will move to a metropolitan city. So what happens to rural area? Uh, what about the student-teacher ratio? You have 60 children and one teacher, and so on and so forth. Uh, to me personally, I think in formal schooling, there is a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear and a lot of tension. I mean, I thought learning was supposed to be joyous, right? Uh, and why do I say that? Because um, interestingly, um, in one of our school in the cloud labs, we were just talking to the principal and we said, you know, how is it going? And the principal said, yeah, it's pretty good. And uh, so uh, uh, what do the teachers feel about it? And she said, well, the teachers are a little apprehensive, you know. So we said, what do you mean by apprehensive? You know, they're not, uh, they're not appreciating some parts of it. So what happened? Children are uh, overconfident. We said, what do you mean by overconfident? She said, uh, children are correcting the pronunciation of the teachers. Not just that, but interestingly, uh, while we were talking, uh, having this conversation, there was this girl, and for some odd reason, this, you know, the, the girls kind of stretched their arms like this. Ma'am, can I come in? So uh, she had just millimeters entered the room, and um, the principal looked at the girl, stared at her for a couple of seconds, and she said, out. Um, you know, there's a part of the brain that switches off the moment it senses fear. You stop performing. And that is exactly what is happening. To me, I think uh, the examination say, uh, system is also kind of defunct. And why do I say that? Because questions are so predictable. I, you give me uh, question papers, I will figure it out, alternate ear question paper, I'll make a questionnaire for you, and 70% of the time it'll be accurate. Uh, you also have uh, private uh, tuitions it's rampant, and it's not just in a metropolitan city like Delhi, it is in a rural area like Kalikuppam or Kurakati. And why do we have private tuitions if we have our formal schooling? It was so fantastic. And of course, what is taught, there is complete disconnect between theory and practice. All right, uh, now coming back to what I talked about Kalikuppam, uh, Professor Mitra, by this time, moved to UK uh, around 2006, and uh, he uh, sent an advertisement in the UK Telegraph, and he said, I want people, all retired teachers, who can give me one hour of their time, free of cost. He got 200 applications. And that is where he formed the Grannies Cloud. These are grannies who get beamed in whenever a child is in need. Okay. Uh, by this time, 2013, Ted gave him an award, a $1 million award, to make his dream come true. So he's made School in the Clouds. These are seven School in the Clouds that we have, two in UK, five in India, three in community settings, remote community settings in West Bengal, one in a government school in Delhi, and one in a private school. And this is what it looks like. This is one in Killingsworth in UK, and um, this one is in Korakati. Um, I just want to give you a sense of um, how remote these villages are. Porakati is uh, in the Sundarbans. I don't know how many of you have heard of Sundarbans. In the Ganges Delta, right? And uh, the only mode of communication or transportation is through a ferry, which most of the time capsizes. And then, of course, you go on a tuk-tuk, which is a wooden plank, and you have this motor engine fitted into it, unpaved roads. You do have electricity but that is far and few. You would just barely have a lamp being lit up in, in the village. By five o'clock or six o'clock, the entire space is absolutely dark. You do have internet, but that's government internet, uh, BCNL, and the towers mostly are dysfunctional. So we have a private vendor, and uh, apparently uh, the band, there's a huge bandwidth issue route right now, and the private vendor says, well, if you want to have a dedicated bandwidth, then you please, uh, you'll have to invest uh, more, something like 50 lakhs, and of course, for us, that's ridiculous in amount. Uh, so that's what I'm talking of remoteness. You know, when I'd gone to Korakati, I wanted a cup of tea, and I asked for chai tea, and they gave me salt and sweet tea, and I was like, what am I having? And that's when I realized that it's so, so hot, that place that you need, to, and you sweat a lot, and therefore, you need to take sugar and salt. Okay. Uh, so what is the school in the cloud? The school in the cloud typically is, these are glass panes, and you have a room, you have five or six computers connected to the internet, and you have this huge TV where grannies are beamed in. These, quest these children are given questions. They're not given simple questions like, what is friction? They're given questions like, why would you slip on a wet floor? 
a big question, a question that a child can relate to. Children form their own groups, they can exchange information, they can change their groups and they talk, and there's no adult intervention. In formal schooling, uh, interestingly, you would call it cheating, and we call it collaboration. Okay, um, now, um, not just that, but we also have the second power that we have is the granny's cloud. Remember I talked about it? Yeah, and these are grannies. Of course, now we have something like 200 to 300 grannies from all over the world. You know, interestingly, children are driven by three things. A, children love encouragement. B, they go beyond expectations. And three, they love to show off in front of a friendly adult. And that is exactly what the children do. They talk. They talk to these grannies. They communicate with these grannies. And you know what, I think I will just, can we have the video please? This is the girl, uh, Aisha, she was, she was in eighth class in government school in Kalkaji. Yeah. Aisha. Aisha. Yes. And which class do you uh, study? From eighth grade. Lab is very different from other classes because usually when we come in school, we we doing prayer and first period, second period, fourth, and we after lunch and we go at home. But when the soul lab is come in our school, we come here and we thinking the these computers are available for us and only teachers. But Rekha ma'am said, if this computer is yours, you do anything. So I'm very happy. Yes, it's for me. <laughs> So learning about how to how to use computer and how to typing, I will I I love it. Internet is very 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 important for us because when we confuse any questions in my class and when my subject teacher say about your activity and any subject of homework and holiday uh, homeworks, so we can do on internet and get the answer. So it's very useful for me. Adna ma'am is so sweet. He, she, talks, she talks with me with uh, like a friendly. Mm -hmm. She not behave like a serious or uh, means teacher. It's, she behaves. She behaves like a friend. So I'm I'm not get the fear of granny. Technology. Mm -hmm. The class is not uh, available are computers and internet so, mm -hmm. and uh, talking with grannies. Mm -hmm. Class uh, classes uh, usually we learn about your about us uh, slavers mm -hmm. but only this. Mm -hmm. But here we can do something about my uh, when uh, when what is in my mind mind going, what is question so we so I type here and we get and uh, get the answer from internet. My mother is housewife and my father is carpenter. I come here, mm -hmm. I'm feeling, can I talk in English mm -hmm. properly? Mm -hmm. Now I am confident, yes, I am I'm talking English mm -hmm. properly and I understand English. Thinking now, English is not very difficult for me. English is simple. All right. Um. So uh, we are right now in, uh, is this a three year research period? So we're right now in uh, 1.5 years of research. We are just tapping two very important skills. A, reading comprehension. And it's not just reading, but it's reading discernibly. And two, surfing the internet. You know, um, if I to ask you, um, do you know where Guatemala is? What would you do? You have your cell phones, you have internet, and you will figure it out. The only difference is whoever does it first, right? So that, I think, are the two important skills. Of course, the fact that they are col uh, collaborating, uh, we figure out aspirations, um, team building, critical thinking, all of that uh, in confidence, that is also as a byproduct. Both qualitative and quantity, that's what we are doing right now. Okay, uh, to me, 21st century skills, these are purely my views. A, allow internet. Allow internet in schools and in examinations. The moment you do that, your questions will no longer be simple questions like, uh, when did Babar die or when, did, uh, when was Akbar born, <laughs> all right? They would be big questions, questions which are relevant. And the moment you do that, your assessment will change. Because you know what, it's not about when you start doing, when you start surfing internet, it's not cut-paste copy, that's what you do. You actually figure out that you need to 
corroborate the information, find evidence, like you do in a PhD program, right? That's what you, so there's no correct, wrong or wrong, wrong, wrong or right answer. It's not about, it's not about just, of course, factual information, yes, but when you ask something like, uh, can trees think, right? So there is no correct one answer, and you corroborate. So that's what these children do. And I think that's what is required. Uh, of course, the evaluator here, um, uh, not necessarily the teacher, might have to then figure out how to do the evaluation. And the last point is that you need to have collaboration uh, because that is what is required when you work in, in your jobs. Teamwork, that's what's required. Um, to me, um, well, I would, uh, I think, end by saying this. Um, I don't need to know everything. I just need to know where to find it when I need it. These words were written by Einstein uh, at an age when internet was not created. He predicted an age where knowing would become obsolete. We live in this age. I'm not saying knowing is not important. I'm saying it is not as knowing as much as 17 years, and then you have to remember and use that knowledge for the rest of your lives. You can have it at any point in time. The only difference is, and that's because of internet. You just need to know where to find it, how to find it, how accurately to find it, and how confidently to find it. Um, okay. Can we start clapping again once, please? One more time. Oh, thank you. Could you send something? All right. Uh, you know what? When you started clapping, uh, it was at an individual pace. But when you, um, later on, everybody was in sync. And that is what we call self-organizing beings. Children intuitively are self-organizing. There is chaos, there is definitely chaos, but out of that chaos emerges a semblance, a learning. So to me, you give children an environment and let things happen as against making it happen. Thank you. <laughs>